But first, I'm joined by the Mail on Sunday columnist Peter Hitchens. Peter, welcome to Piers Morgan Uncensored. Pleasure to be here. So, look, what is your view of the Ukraine war? How do you think this now ends? What should the UK be doing? Well, I think that all civilised and sensible people should be making every conceivable effort to bring it to an end. A huge numbers of, of happy, innocent persons have been turned into corpses and refugees. Cities have been blasted into pieces. Uh, houses turned to ruins. An economy smashed. Uh, and the, the whole of Ukraine now faces continuing destruction. Uh, I do not see what interest it serves the world to continue with this. The, the absolutely interest of the Ukrainian people for there to be uh, peace talks which would bring this awfulness to an end. Yeah, but also, how, but hang on, uh, but how, how would the peace talks go? I mean, are you suggesting that Ukraine... Uh, well, hang on, yeah. are you suggesting Ukraine should give up territory no. that has been illegally seized by Russia? No, I'm, I, if, if I was saying that, I would say that. I'm, saying I'm asking that, you the question. Well, I know, and, you're, and I, I'm saying... I'm not saying that, so there you are. That's, 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 that one's solved. Good. You got any, any other questions? I've got I mean, a lot of questions, yeah. So, I mean, what do you think these peace talks would lead to? Because Vladimir Putin wants to... Vladimir Putin wants to keep control of the territory he's taken, and probably some more. Uh, Ukraine is absolutely adamant they shouldn't be ceding any territory. They even want Crimea back for reasons which are perfectly obvious if you spend time with Ukrainians. So my question for you is, you, you think you can end with peace talks. How does that end if the Ukrainians won't give up any territory? I won't be there at the peace talks. The, the, the people who will be involved would be the governments of the two prominent countries. And they will decide, but it seems to me... Do, do you... Do you must, I must ask you, uh, given the tone of your question, do you like war? Uh, have you seen war? Do you know what a human body looks like after a bullet has passed through it? Well, I, I would... OK. I, I, well, I would say... I would, I would answer that. I, I would answer that, Peter, by saying, as I think you know, because actually your brother, uh, Christopher, wrote for me at the time, I, uh, and he opposed my position on this, I opposed vociferously, as editor of the Mirror, the war in Iraq, uh, which yeah. was, sadly, I was unsuccessful in trying to get that stopped. However, my brother was a British Army colonel and served for 37 years in the army, and he served in places like Iraq and Afghanistan. So, yeah, I got an indirect uh, feedback on what a war is like. And no, nobody likes war. You'll never meet a soldier who says they like war. However, as in 1939, when the world, and I say the world, not just Ukraine, when the world is confronted with an evil dictator who thinks he can just march into neighbouring countries and destroy them and kill thousands, if tens of thousands of people, and then take their land, uh, the world has a duty, in my opinion, as it did in '39, to stand up to that person. And that person right now is Vladimir Putin. So that would be my position. Sure, but the world has stood up to him. His, his, uh, his offensive has been halted. Uh, his intentions, as far as we know what they were, have not been achieved. And they're not likely to be achieved. So now we have a position where the, 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 the two sides are at something like a stalemate. We don't know. I, have, I don't make any pretense, unlike everybody else in the trade of journalism, to be a military expert. I don't know what the shape of the Ukrainian offensive, which we're told about so often, will be or whether it will succeed. But even so, it seems to me that the time has come uh, for us to make an effort to bring an end to war. Yeah, but and I just, think the way you bring an end to it, surely, uh, it's, it, uh, it seems to me we've been very successful, Europe and America, in arming the Ukrainians to, f to resist having their country taken by Putin, and they've been incredibly successful in doing that, and there's now a real belief amongst the Ukrainians and President Zelensky that if they get enough of the military hardware that they need, they can launch a counter-offensive and actually drive Russia and the Russian forces out of the territory that's been seized. I don't think they've got any intention of waging any kind of peace anytime soon, because as far as they're concerned, they've had a quarter of their country taken. Well, I, 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 you, you're right. There is no pressure on them from the great powers to, to make peace. There is no general pressure on them. There's no pressure from Western public opinion on them to make peace. So you, you, you may well be right. It's, it's astonishing to remember that so Vladimir Zelensky was actually elected as president of Ukraine on a peace ticket. That he actually stood before his people and said, this, there, is a, there is a great war going on in my country, which, as you probably know, started in 2014, not 2022. It's time it was over, and we must take steps to do so. But that was before Vladimir Putin invaded. I know it was, but lots of things were before. But I think it's important for people to understand this episode has background and, and, and many, many elements in it which are not much discussed. 
in the in, in the generally rather um, how should I say uh, cursory coverage, which the the causes and nature of the war is, is given in this country. But Zelensky was a peace candidate. He was frustrated in that by elements in his own country who preferred. Uh, yeah, but, but, but as you know, as you know, the situation dramatically changed February last year when Putin inva invaded Ukraine. And you've got to you've got to say that. I, I just find I find it I find it strange that somebody somebody as smart and perceptive as you, Peter, would look at the situation and think the Ukrainians have any desire to wage any form of peace settlement, which may involve them ceding territory. Why should they? We wouldn't, would we? We didn't in 1940, 1940s. We fought with every every bit of our strength to defy the Nazis. Don't want me to be on your program. All you need to do is not invite me. If you invite me, you should at least do the, do the courtesy and listen to what I say. I've never at any stage suggested, you're the one who suggested, that anybody should cede any land. I would have thought the position the Ukrainians find themselves in now is very strong if they go into negotiations. Why well, you think the Russians would simply give back all the land they've taken? I don't know what would take place in negotiations as plain. Come off it, Peter. You don't well, think for a moment Vladimir Putin would give up that territory. Of course he wouldn't. You know that. Do you want me to answer? Do you want me to answer your questions or not? I want to. I want to. I want you to explain why you think this could possibly get resolved unless Ukraine just cede their territory. Vladimir Putin is not going to give any of the land back. He's just spent know? the last year and a half bombing them into submission to try and take it. Why would how, he give it back? How do, how do you know? What is this war about? This war is about Russia under a, under a dictator trying yeah. to take back territory that Vladimir Putin believes should never have been given away in the first place. That's, That's what it's about. Version. That's your version of it. And again, I think that the... Well, I don't the, think he's made any secret of it. Well, I'm sorry. I, it, it's a very long and complicated story and, and, and one which you certainly, all the people in, in broadcasting, before whom I might attempt to explain and argue this and not the person I choose because you'd interrupt me before I got one tenth of what I was going to say out, and you talk over me, which is what you do. The last time we met each other on television, you shut me down and silenced me because I was right about Why do you COVID. stop whining and just answer I'm the question? Now, I'm now here you are again. Stop, do you want me stop to stop whining and answer the question? Do you want me to say what I was to say, or do you not? Because I've got many other things I'm happy to You're do. You're filling all the time that I'm giving you by whining about not getting airtime. Say what you want to say. Thank you, and, and, and stop talking over me. There has never been any suggestion from me since this program began, that Ukraine should give up territory. That came from you. I said there should be negotiations. Negotiations I, I, to do what? Well. There you go again. The negotiations are... Uh, it's would, called would an interview, sense. Peter. I'm allowed to ask you supplementaries. Uh, the, uh, the, the, viewers, the, the viewers can decide for themselves whether you're giving me a fair shake or not. All right. Look, uh, we're going around the houses here, but I appreciate you joining the program. Thank you very much.